So Tough first and foremost was actually born out of a demand from the community where we had users that would look at boards from our high end mainstream series or from the RG series and says, I love these boards, but I want something that's a little bit more simplified in terms of really being first and foremost about long term builds. So I'm generally going to be looking at three, four, five years in between a build. I want a specific focus on really reliability and durability. It can serve pretty much any type of user out there, uh, but there are different aspects in terms of how we've designed the board that benefit users that are looking for a more professional usage model. There is actually for this generation RGB uh, lighting built into the central portion of the tough emblem that's on the thermal armor. So if you want a little bit of you know some added aesthetic appeal, it's there. Some of the key differentiators are going to be one, the validation. Uh, tough boards go through an extraordinarily high level. Now all ASUS boards are validated extremely heavily. And we also validate specialized items that normal users don't use. Uh, you might be making an investment into a $200, $300, $400, $500 dollar professional RAID controller card, possibly a compute processing card, a professional Blackmagic capture cards, right, or uh, HDMI or uh, multi-channel uh, gigabit Ethernet adapters. These type of things don't normally go into normal motherboards, and when they actually get detected, they can go into initialization routine problems where the systems might not respond normally to them. We make it a purpose point to actually test these products with these type of complex devices. So on most motherboards traditionally, you're talking about maybe having like four to six fan headers. Uh, on tough series, it's generally in the vicinity of usually seven to 10 fan headers. Uh, with this motherboard, you have 10 total fan headers, uh, but then you still have support for our fan extension card. And keep in mind that just like our other motherboards, we support DC and PWM output control, meaning that you can do PWM fan splitter cables, you can do automatic fan calibration profiling, three pin and four pin, so DC and PWM output support. Underneath all that armor, there's actually uh, multiple sensors. And another really cool part to all of this is going to be the ability to now add performance tuning. Historically, uh, while Sabertooth boards have been awesome for overclocking, you always had to do it manually through the UEFI. Uh, but for this generation, you do have some basic automated overclocking options that are available to you, not just in the UV5, but also in the operating system. Some people ask us, so what's the point of having actually this huge metal backplate on the back of the motherboard? So one, it adds a considerable amount of rigidity to the board. Larger graphics cards, large uh, CPU coolers, things along those lines, they can actually create bowing and flexing to the PCB in the board. And boards are designed for this, but adding that rigidity helps to make sure that the board stays equal. Most damage over time occurs actually through electrostatic discharge, whether you're plugging in a USB device to your front panel or plugging in an ethernet connection to the back of the board. For the Tough series, we do have two versions. We have the, the Mark I, which is our highest end version, so really focused at users that are looking for the most extensive level of monitoring and control and airflow management. And the Mark II is gonna still offer you all the validation and reliability elements that we have on our Tough series, especially when you talk about our ESD technology, so electrostatic discharge and surge protection. These are also featuring our land guard design, which means that we've improved the housings and the overall design to be able to be uh, better protected uh, from things like electrostatic discharge and surges and spikes. Uh, where you're going to begin to see differences are going to be in some of the more premium elements like the sound design, right? If you're a videographer, you're a content creator, even if you're a gamer, you know, you're listening to music, you're watching back your content. In terms of the overall audio experience, it's going to be best be realized if you're looking for headphone amplification on the Mark I. You still do have an operational amplifier that's on the Mark II, but not to the same degree in terms of its overall output power that you're going to have on the Mark I. So best audio experience definitely on Tough is going to be realized on the Mark I. So one other really interesting addition too is that we've had a long relationship with DTS and one of the most exciting ones that's really been really popular amongst uh, the audio community uh, since its announcement about a year and a half ago has been DTS-X. So this is a brand new cutting edge algorithm that uh, DTS has put in play for uh, taking multi-channel surround but from stereo based uh, content and allowing you to realize that content on your stereo speakers and stereo headsets. It's really awesome to see this uh, featured on our Tough Series of Motherboards. So in terms of your key I.O. specification, uh, Mark I is definitely packed in. You've got all the key things you're looking for, USB 3.0, 3.1, M.2, NVMe support, and you've got dual M.2. All across all our Z270 boards, we try to optimize placement based on thermal consideration. Uh, a lot of vendors will always place sometimes that one uh, M.2 slot only in proximity to the DPU slot or to the CPU. Those are the two hottest parts of the motherboard. Uh, what you see here on the Tough is that we have it isolated away from the GPU and also isolated away from the CPU. And the secondary one is actually vertical. We 
raised. Uh, the benefit of that is that it gets more direct airflow exposure from your front intake fans. So regardless of where you set up your M.2 configurations or if you're running both of them, you're going to get a great, reliable, cool experience. So another interesting aspect that you're going to have on the Mark 1 is going to be that it features dual Intel NICs. So the advantage is you can have one connection dedicated for essentially your outbound connections to the internet and another one for your local area connection. And you don't have to split the bandwidth of that port for non-intended purposes. So imagine if I'm sharing a big um, ISO image or raw data files, uh, high bandwidth, high bitrate video, or I'm sending out my uh, stream while I'm downloading something, that's the benefit of essentially having a dual NICs configuration.